Hey everybody, Scott here from Double Beetle Design. Today's tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about how to build a wood stud wall using actual wood studs in Revit. Now, most of the time when we do walls in Revit, we just have a stud layer or a thickness that represents our studs. Here we're going to actually show wood studs within a wall using a curtain wall element. This might be handy for someone who is modeling uh, the framing of a wall, such as a contractor or a vendor who needs to show wood framing in Revit and export it. Um, so this might help you a little bit. So let's take a deep dive in and get started. First and foremost, let's just make a brand new file, brand new project. Let's make a brand new project. I'll use Imperial since I'm in the States. And when we do our new project, this might also be your, um, when you do your own project for your firm or for your company, uh, you'll have your own template, of course, but I'll just start with a brand new one here. So what you're probably used to seeing is when you have a wall, uh, we'll just do a create wall, and we will, there are some pre-made walls in Revit. Um, some of these never really made sense to me. We just don't have a good interior partition wall um, for residential construction. Uh, I'm a commercial architect, so four and seven eighths partition seems right to me. But what we'll do is just take this generic wall and let's just draw it a certain length. 40 feet looks fine to me. And we'll go ahead, I like to work mostly in 3D. So we will go ahead and do a 3D view of this wall. Let's also set it up to be fine detail. And I do like to have them realistically shaded. My graphics part are pretty good, so it'll handle some, some shading. And then to trim out all levels and anything else that's in the model, I'll just use the section box by element. And here's my wall with my two levels. First and foremost, let's take a look at this thing. Let's shrink this down just a little bit. Take a look at this wall. We'll turn our thin lines on to make it a little bit easier to see. And as you see, it has absolutely no material to it. It's just a generic wall. So let's start by creating this wall. We're going to do a two by six wall. We're going to have half inch sheathing on one side, which would probably be plywood. And on the other side, we're going to do a half inch of gypsum wallboard. So let's select the wall. And then we're going to say edit type. Under our structure, and you can expand this out just a little bit, make this a little bit bigger. And let's start out by defining our structural centered layer. This is going to be your wood studs. So if you don't already have it, you can type in wood. And there is nothing really like a wood stud layer by default. <clears throat> you can pick soft wood or lumber if you want. I usually like to make a wood stud layer here. And I usually like to expand my material libraries because sometimes the AEC materials from Autodesk will have what you're looking for. In this case, they won't, but we'll just do it anyway. So we'll look see if AEC Materials has anything under wood for us. They don't, but we'll just take this wood material and we'll add it to our project. So we could select that here and say structure one is wood. And here in the States, 5.5 inches, 5.5 and inch is a 2 by 6, uh, is the actual dimension of a nominal 2 by 6. So now we've got our wood layer. We're going to have to add our sheathing as well as our gypsum. So let's do an insert. And I'll do a whole other video on the reason why we should move these structure layers up and down above the core boundary or below the core boundary. But for now, towards the exterior side, and we're going to obviously in the future have some kind of building wrap and some exterior material on this. But for now, we'll just leave that as structure. And we're going to put a plywood sheathing on this. Luckily, there is a plywood sheathing already in the materials. So we'll go ahead and add that. And on this project, we'll do half inch sheathing. Let's do one more. Let's get our gypsum board and chips. Uh, gypsum board is a finished material. The rule in Revit, if, if you want to follow this accurately, is that finish one is usually exterior finished materials. Finish two is usually interior finished materials. It doesn't really matter as long as they're consistent. You don't want to do an exterior wall that has two different finished materials and one of them is finished one and one of them is finished two because they won't they won't merge right. So we'll do finish two for an interior material. We'll go ahead and type in gypsum or GYP. And we will make this half inch gypsum. All right. So if we look at our wall type, we've, we've, Went ahead and did that to the generic eight inch. So let's just make sure we rename this so someone doesn't come along and try and apply this as a generic. We'll call it exterior wall two by six 
wood studs. Half inch. Apply. Half inch. G W B for chips and ball. I usually like to name my walls this way so that when you're looking through a list, you know exactly what you're looking for. Some people will just use acronyms or different different characters. I like to keep them straight. I've done all kinds of different naming materials, but this is the one I like to stick with. So when we hit the OK button, we'll see that our wall has changed. And because it's cut by the section box a little bit, if we get really close on that because we're in realistic mode, we can see that we've got something that looks like a darker sheathing on the outside. We've got what appears to be a solid chunk of wood in the middle and then our gypsum board on the outside. We'll get into doing materials a little bit later, but for this tutorial, let's show how we can actually turn this into wood studs. So I'm going to increase my section box a little bit. I'm going to select this wall, and I'm just going to copy it a fixed distance so that I can copy it back the same amount. We'll say 10 feet. Now, here comes the fun part. We're going to select this wall, and we're going to turn it into a curtain wall. Now, what will this get us? Not much. It'll give us something that looks like a giant piece of glass. What we're going to do is we're going to edit this curtain wall. This time, let's duplicate it because we want to use curtain wall again. And we will call this exterior 2 by 6 wood studs only. Now that we have our wood studs only wall, the first thing we're going to do is we're, the exterior function doesn't really matter. It's more of a parameter in this case. Automatically embed we don't want to do because if we embed it within our wall, it's going to delete the exterior wall and we're not going to be able to see the jib or the sheathing. The curtain panel um, is none and the join condition is right now not defined. We don't really need to modify any of this yet, but what's really important here is our vertical grid layout. So our layout for a vertical grid, we're going to do a fixed distance. For a lot of buildings here in the US, 16 inch studs on center is common. And we can turn this off for a just for mullion size. So we don't want the spacing to change based on the mullions. Now, our vertical mullions are going to be of interior type. Right off the bat, there's two different types of mullions, a circular or a rectangular. The last time I checked, wood studs are rectangular. So we're going to just use the placeholder rectangular mullion one here for now. As soon as we select this, we all of a sudden see what starts to look like. Wood studs, rectangular. But what we're going to have to do is modify this just a little bit more. First and foremost, in between each stud, we've got this panel. What's a problem? So let's go back into our type. And instead of a curtain panel being none, which you would think means it's empty, it's not. You actually have to select the empty curtain panel in your list. And it's right up here. Empty system panel. Empty. Once we select that and hit apply, notice those have gone away. Now we just have studs with nothing else. So this is starting to get there. So let's pick a mullion. These mullions don't seem the right size. Go down to families, curtain wall mullions, rectangular, and let's edit this one. We're not gonna use just a, direct, a rectangular mullion one, so we'll just edit this one to type properties. Let's rename it. We'll call it two by six. We're not going to change the angle or the offset. The profile is still default, and it is perpendicular face. The thickness and the width on side one, width on side two. If you're unfamiliar with how to do mullions, and we could do a whole tutorial on storefronts and curtain walls and mullions and grids. But the short answer is the thickness is the long side. It's the, it's the six inch side of a two by six. The width on side one and the width on side two is the thickness of the stud left to right. And what that means is if you have a width on side one, it's side one of a center curtain grid. So you have a curtain grid running up and down and side one could have a different thickness than side two instead of them both being equal. Well, we've got an inch and a half stud, which is the actual dimension of a nominal two by six. So inch and a half divided by two is three quarters of an inch. So we'll do three quarters of an inch on the left of the curtain grid, three quarters of an inch on the right of the curtain grid, Thickness because it's a two by six is actually five and a half inches. So three quarters plus three quarters equals one and a half. And by five and a half is the actual size of a piece of 
two by six here in the States. Material, we're gonna go ahead and let's just grab our wood material. This can be whatever you want. If you really want to go crazy and do some really nice looking soft wood lumber or change the appearance, that's fine. We'll actually pick soft wood lumber in this case. I think this might look a little bit better, but it doesn't really matter right now. So we've picked soft wood lumber. We're gonna select this and we're gonna hit okay. Now watch these millions over here in the wall. They're suddenly going to change into more of a piece of lumber. They look like a two by six, and they actually have a little bit of grain, a little bit of relief to them. Well, that's great. So now we're done, right? Well, don't forget, most frame walls actually have a bottom plate, a sill plate, and they have a, a, a top plate. And in a lot of cases, we do a double top plate. So let's create a new wood stud, and we're gonna do a two X wood stud. We're gonna have two wood studs, two two by sixes, stacked on top of each other. So it's not two by six, one and a half by five and a half. It's actually gonna be three inches by five and a half. So let's duplicate that. We'll call this two by six double stud. We'll do our type properties. And the only thing we're really gonna change is the width on side one, width on side two. If you have two studs stacked together, you're gonna have an inch and a half on one side and an inch and a half on the other. Still gonna keep the same six inch thickness or five and a half actual, and we'll keep our material the same. So we've created a regular wood stud and a double stud. In our wall, let's give ourselves a single bottom plate. So let's say edit type. Now we're actually going to do a border type, right? But it's gonna be horizontal. Now, border one in this list means the bottom, border two means the top. So border one type is gonna be a single two by six. So we'll do a two by six wood stud and we'll hit okay. Notice now we'll have a bottom plate for our curtain wall. Let's edit this again and let's get that double on the top. Border two on a horizontal mullion will be our double stud. So now we're gonna do a three inch by five and a half inch double top plate. My section box is cutting it off. Let's raise this up. Okay, now here we can see we have a thicker stud at the top, a double top plate. It doesn't really have two lines going, uh, like two studs going through it yet. We could, if we really wanted to, create a curtain grid and make this look like it had a horizontal line going through it, but that's a little bit too much work in this case. So, so now we actually have a wall that looks to be a two by six framed wall with a double top plate. One problem is that this is breaking, these, these mullions are breaking at every vertical stud. So let's go into here, let's edit type. And then we're gonna say our join condition is going to be border and horizontals are continuous. That means our borders, which are all the sides of the curtain panel, as well as our horizontal grid are gonna run all the way through. Now, if you've got intermittent like fire blocking that breaks at every stud, that could be a little tricky, that may not look right. But if we hit okay here, notice now our top plate is continuous, our bottom plate is continuous, and our studs are stacked exactly how they should be. Great, so we've got a stud wall here. And if we really wanted to, we could actually put this back into our other wall. Remember, we moved it 10 feet. So I typed in an MV or move. We're gonna move this feet and we're going to get this error highlighted walls overlap and we know that because we just moved our wood stud wall within our standard wall now you can't see anything so the last thing we're going to do and, and if you had a, a building that you want to do this throughout and show chip everywhere and show sheathing everywhere this would take a lot of work but in this case we'll do this one wall uh, it might be worth it so here we go Let's pick our old wall. You can see the studs are kind of buried inside of it. And what we're going to say is we're going to change our central structure from wood to Autodesk's air material. Now, you don't really see it up here, but down here you'll see an air that has absolutely nothing in render preview. Let's move that up into our into our project browser and let's replace the air that's there. The great thing about this material is it, once you place it, it makes the center core invisible. And you'll see as soon as I hit okay, that now suddenly, if 
we cut through this from the top and get past that top plate, now we have wood studs that are buried within our wall and you can actually see them. If you wanted to get a little bit more fancy, you could actually override the graphics in this view. You could make this exterior wall a little bit transparent. Let's make it 50% transparent. And now you've got a really nice wall that actually shows the studs embedded inside. And this wall can be um, changed, duplicated. You can create more of these as you want. One thing if you're making corners, another thing that you'll want to do is modify this, say edit type. And you'll want to make your border one vertical type. Probably you could, you just for looks, you could make it your two by six double wood stud. That way at every corner, you'll have a nice double stud which would show that framing a little bit more accurately. So there you have it. That's how you would make an actual wood stud wall with actual sticks of two by six lumber in Revit. If this is something that you would need for your model, this is a great way to do it. Thanks for watching. My name is Scott. This is Double Deal Design. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.